Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. Hang out with this nerd. Nerdarchy's Ted. In this GM tip, we discuss what is good encounter design. Jump down the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with us. So we have another GM911, which guys, uh, you can find the original GM911 in the description below. Or, of course, as always, if you have your own GM911s you want to help with, you can send them to nerdarchy at gmail.com with GM911 right in the subject line. All right, so we got this one from Austin, and he goes into you know his history of 3.5 and 4th edition, but the crux of the matter is he, he's trying to design encounters that are interesting and challenging, and he says, where's the happy medium of making combat challenging yet not so easy that they just brush it through. Does he worry about an XP budget? Does he add traps or, you know, difficult terrain? What is he, what do you, what do we do here? So a lot of times ma making the encounter more interesting is evolved around like your p player buying into, into the encounter, right? That's going to be a huge part of it. So that could be like your description, you you know, role playing with uh, with your players during the encounter, like getting them to interact on a level that just isn't I roll the d twenty, you know, banter back and forth, and then there's other things you can do as well. He he looks at things and he's he's seeing a challenge, so he he uses an example of, I got two wolves, there's three people in the party, it takes you know estimated fifteen twenty minutes. Clear, clear a space on the table, put out the battle map, put down the two wolves, put down something to represent the three, the three characters, roll initiative, you know, all the, all the steps, finally defeat the combat, here's your XP, move on. There's no, there's no challenge, there's no role playing, not for these characters. Is there a reason to not just say, you know, there, there's a fight, you, you, you defeat two wolves, here's your XP. What, what's the downside of doing that? to actually run in the account the combat. So here's the thing. Like if you're running your encounters like that, it, at a certain point it's like what's the point in playing? Like so you know, you have to it, you have to engage your players. It doesn't matter it doesn't matter how challenging the combat is. It doesn't matter how hard the encounter is. What matters is if you were able to engage your players in it and get them to think, get them to interact, get them to feel something, right? That, that doesn't necessarily always have to involve the, the, the challenging encounter. That could just be the things that are going on around that encounter. For instance, two wolves, right? They're on... They're, they're camping. They're, they've made camp for the night. And, you know, one of, the, one of the wolves sneaks in and grabs a pack and runs out, out of the camp with it. It, you know, and then, you know, the other wolf is kind of like waiting. Or maybe even, maybe even acts as a distraction. You know why the wolf does it. So now it's not just two wolves and you're going to fight and kill them. It's two wolves, but one of them took your stuff. And you're like, why did they do that? What do they want? Can you know? Can you just feed them and make them go away? You, you can try and interact with it. And that's just like me taking you know, some ideas from the basic example he just gave. Literally in last night's game, the first, the first combat of the night, it hit hard. And it actually had a player dropped right from the get-go, and when I described, okay, here's the next encounter, and there's two spiders, they're like, oh man, we're, we're going to die. Because they, they, they defeated the first one, but they I didn't describe it any differently. I just said that there's two spiders there. And they're thinking in their brain, well, this other spider beat the crap out of us. How am I going to deal with, with two of them now? And you know, they went in and they were they were a pushover, but there was already that level of tension from that first encounter. They were set up to, okay, you know, I'm I'm going into this combat shakily. I'm committed, but I'm worried. And if you do the same kind of thing where you you have things that could be described similarly but are vastly different in levels of power, they can approach they can approach a combat or possibly even run from something that they can defeat easily. You never know how players are going to interact with stuff. And sometimes it's your, it can be just your descriptions. Uh, you, you just never know. Like, you know, I did an encounter with ogres and goblins and 
the ogres kind of like charged the party and the party made mincemeat of them. But then, like, the goblins stole something and ran into the woods, and then a player was like, I'm not chasing them in there. I'm not going in there. <laughs> like, you know, for whatever reason, that was scary to them. But, you know, it's like setting the scene and creating things. Even going back to the wolf, the wolf encounter, like, you know, you guys, you're, the players come across a, a clearing, and there's two wolves over a carcass. Well, now, you know, now you're an intruder on their hunt. And, you know, so their hackles are up, they're snarling, they're growling, they're, they're ready to fight, fend and fight for their kill. What do you do, right? And this, this gives your players the opportunity. Well, maybe you don't actually have to pull out the minis, right? Maybe they can circumnavigate it. You know? Or, you know, maybe, maybe the kill now is, you know, a humanoid body, right? And it's got stuff that maybe the players want or clues that it needs, uh, maybe... You come across, and it's clear that the wolves didn't actually make this kill, but you know, but they're 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 scavenging. To them, it's dinner. Yeah, right. So, like, is it still a boring encounter just because they can defeat the wolves easily? Is there a ranger or a druid in the party that actually has knowledge, nature, and wants to either befriend them? Here's here's a way to introduce your ranger to be a beastmaster, or to allow your druid to get a companion. Um, you know, you, you could allow for actual role playing. What if they cast, you know, speak with wild or speak with, you know, animals. Commune with nature, speak with animals. You yeah. know, there's, there's all different ways to go into this type of encounter, depending upon what type of players you have at a table. And that's leaving aside terrain and traps and, you know, any kind of hazards that you might want to throw in there to add another layer of challenge. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, and they're great ideas. I just wanted to be able to illustrate that even though what you're saying is an easy, boring encounter, it doesn't really have to be. You know, there can be more to it. You know, maybe this is the chance for your ranger to go, oh, that's, that's you know, that's definitely a mated couple. And, like, you might you may require roles, you may not. And you might be like, oh, they're, you know, they're, they're probably bringing food back to pups or something. You know, you can try and engage them, pull them into your world some more, you know, or maybe, like, this doesn't make sense. This is an area where you wouldn't find wolves. Yeah. So there's so many different ways you can do it. And, like, all right, so forgetting about wolves and just making more interesting encounters, uh, you know, instead of just having, you know, a flat grid with nothing going on, uh, a good example would be when I was at Origins and the battle took places, place on these floating, like, chunk little tiny like island pieces of a monster uh, you know that were frozen in time and floating around and these goblins would follow these creatures and uh that would get frozen in time and it would build settlements into them so there's like ropes and rope bridges so you could definitely do something like that where maybe it's like a really easy dc for them to jump back and forth or areas to push enemies off of so they, they, there's more stuff to interact with and and going one step further, allowing your players to have things that they can that they can use as cover. You know, if you're in the forest, you know, trees, deadfalls, uh, you know, and any kind of you know lar large scrub brush, so something that is sufficient enough to grant cover, and it they put it in there. Well, then that means you you can potentially use it too. You've got a, a fight going on where both people are finding it harder to hit because there's this blockage in the way and you could have this cool scene where they're running around this tree fighting you you know constantly ducking and uh you know jerking around the weapons that's tearing apart this tree what well what does that now lead because the tree's been damaged is there a guardian is there a druid is there something going on everything that can happen can lead to or come from something else that has already happened uh, whether it be, you know, the the dryad or blights or a druid because of damage to this tree or to, you know, the, the plants in the area. Uh, going back to, to the wolves and the body, well, it, it, it could have a, a clue as to, to what what the next adventure is. And that there could be nothing that led them there, but this could lead them to somewhere. So if you've got the ability to link link your events in some way, shape, or form, it's a way to make make it more real. It's a way to make that mean something more. And here's the thing. You do not have to do it ahead of time. Like, maybe it's something the players say, and you're like, you know, that's a good idea, and you just insert that into your game. 
you know, oh, you know, you just maybe you flippantly like <laughs> it's got a signet ring on it, and in your mind it's like worth ten gold pieces and it's treasure, right? <laughs> But, like, they fixate on that. And then you, so you could be like, oh, well, you could try and figure out where it's from or maybe go to a town and ask around. And, ma- you know, and then, like, so now the now it's not just a body anymore. It starts to take on a life of it, its own. It, it becomes it's, a person. It's now someone. It's, and, it, and depending upon what you want to do with it, it's somebody important or it's not important, you know. And, and you, could, you could send them all, oh, well, apparently the signet ring was, uh, you know, custom, th- custom made, and it's valuable, but it doesn't link, link anywhere, or does it, you know? Like, right. You know, again, how, how much do you want to, to go down this rabbit hole? Right, or it was stolen from Sir John three, three days ago, <laughs> uh, and he's, like, really happy to get it back. Hope he's willing to pay double, <laughs> you know, and he becomes a new quest giver or something. You know, uh-huh. you could do anything with it. Even like really basic, simple monsters like goblins, right? In the forest, right? You can't get any more basic than that. Goblins as a bonus action can disengage or hide. Well, goblin archers in a forest could be a nightmare. They have a plus six star stealth check for even a mid-level party. They might actually have the ability to, you know, to fire and disappear and keep moving around. And, you know, they, there could be other ones up in the trees with ambushes. And sure, these are easy monsters, but it, it doesn't have to be an easy encounter, especially if, you know, the, if it's an ambush. I mean, if, if you want to really make that, that challenging, let's, let's say, okay, we've got a, a, a mid-level party. Well, if we have six, uh, six goblins attacking, goblins are a quarter, right? Mm-hmm. So that's... That that's four per per challenge. So let's just say there's twelve of them, but only six are attacking every round. That 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 makes for a challenging encounter, and belies how many things are actually out there. And if they're seeing like these these faces popping up and a different number attacking every round, the players will be confused and short of fireballing the forest. These these guys are going to be pretty difficult to take down, right? And you can like you can take you know easy monsters and make them more challenging by like you said messing with the terrain, creating hazards, using traps. What you know? What if you cut the party comes on a patch of, you know, a patch of the road that's been soaked in oil, but they don't really know it. You know, maybe it's like it. it maybe the soil is a little discar- discolored. So it's, it's a weird like, smell in the air. Yeah, you know, like so it's a, like a high DC for them to actually check and you know you, they, they say they do and you just give them one of like oh you smell you smell something in the air it's faint you know and the combat starts by one of the goblins you know shooting a flame arrow at the ground you know igniting it you know or or maybe it's you know maybe it's a ring of alchemist fire you know so it doesn't actually damage the party but it creates a divide between them and where the enemies are so you know you can do fun things and then then what you find out is this particular tribe of goblins they've actually declared war on this region because of something like may, you know maybe 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 they're actually kind of in the right like in their mind anyway like something happened in a nearby town where they killed some goblins that they came upon you know, so you can you can muddy the waters, you can turn it into role playing and and exploration. So you know, it's it's not the encounter that needs to be challenging. What the, what you need to focus on is how can I make this encounter engaging. So what do you guys think? Do you have any other advice for Austin how to how to how to step up encounter design, make make things more interesting? Uh, put put your thoughts and comments down below while you're down there. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can patronize us in a good way. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.